video we're going to be replacing the default power supply in the Dell Optiplex 390 with an EVGA 450 bronze and this will be for upgrading this PC in the future but today we're just going to show you how to do the power supply. Now the default power supply in the Dell Optiplex 390 is a 240 watt power supply. It doesn't have very many connectors. However, it is 80 plus gold certified, so you might want to keep this power supply around for later because they're very reliable at their job. However, they don't supply the power needed to upgrade the RAM or graphics card or hard drive if you want to add additional stuff to your computer, so we're going to replace it today. Now the first thing you'll need to do is to unscrew the power supply from the back. Next, you're going to need to disconnect the motherboard power and the CPU power. The motherboard power is located right on the motherboard. It's typically a 12 to 14 pin connector and we have to disconnect it right here. Remember when you're disconnecting this uh, plug, remember to uh, hold down in your motherboard lightly. Make sure you're wearing an electrostatic discharge bracelet because you don't want to uh, break your motherboard by pulling too hard on the plug if it's stuck in there tight. There we go. Now we've got this plug out, we're going to do the CPU power. That one's located over here by the fan. It's a 4 pin connector. Let me focus really quick. This one typically comes out a lot easier and you can see we've got the plug out now. After you've disconnected both of those, you're going to need to disconnect the plug from the hard drive too. Again, when you're disconnecting this plug, make sure you're always holding on tight to whatever component you have and that you're wearing some sort of electro discharge, electrostatic discharge device around your arm or you ground yourself on a piece of bare metal before you disconnect these, just to be careful to your computer's parts. So we've got it out here. We can just set that aside. Last of all, we have to remove the CD drive. And that's the same kind of... Uh, power connector as the hard drive is, so just grab it and uh, work it out of there. Good. Now that we've got all the uh, wires and connectors disconnected, it's time to remove the actual power supply itself. Now there's a tab down at the bottom of the power supply that holds it in like a slot, and you're going to have to press that down while you push the power supply out from the back. Then you tilt it forward and just pull it out. Make sure you have everything disconnected. You don't want to yank any cords out of your case as well. Here we go. Our power supply is out. We've got all the cables. You can just set this aside. Now it's time to unbox our 450 bronze and put that in the computer. sits with the power cord facing down if you're holding the case of the motherboard up. So you just put it in the same slot as the original power supply and you slide it in all the way to the back. And make sure that little plate down there pops up so it's holding the power supply in place. Now what you gotta do is screw it in, in the back. Alright, now it's time to connect all the things that you just disconnected, which is motherboard, CPU power, CD, DVD drive power, and the hard drive power. Now I'm not going to worry too much about cable management in this part of the video, as I'm going to be doing that later when I put some more parts in, but if you want to, it would be probably a good idea to do that 
well you put in the power supply cables. So first, what I usually do is I attach the motherboard power. It is 24 pins, sorry about that in the earlier part of the video I said it was 12 or 14, it's uh, 24 and uh, it's oriented with the, uh, the lock part situated forward toward the CPU cooler. So that's the first thing you put in. Alright, now that the motherboard power is in, the next thing you need to do is connect the CPU power. Well, the EVGA 450 watt, you might or may not be using this power supply, comes with 8 CPU pins, you only need one of them. Now, the pins are shaped in such a way that they'll only connect to the motherboard in one sort of configuration, so you don't need to worry if one of them plugs in. If it plugs in, it's the one that fits. So you only need to use one, uh, 4 of these pins. There we go. Now that we've got CPU and motherboard power in, it's time to connect our two drives. Now those are going to use a power connector. That looks like this. Alright, now that we've got everything installed and somewhat mediocrely cable managed, it's time to put the cover back on and uh, test the system out and see if it boots. That's all you really need to know about swapping the power supply in an Optiplex 390. Any real kind of form factor power supply like the one I just used in this video will fit in the PC. The EVGA uh, ones are pretty good, I would recommend them. It's a pretty easy job and it's really easy to do on these Optiplexes, they don't have many stuff to connect to them. Now that power supply, now that it's been upgraded, it will be able to run an RX 460 and a larger hard drive and more RAM which will come in a later video. Thanks for watching.